Uh, I, I've got to be honest with you. There's no magic wand that makes the economic problems that were years in the making disappear overnight. And sometimes it's easy for politicians to exploit the anger, the pain that people are feeling right now. I have to point out, though, that some of the very same folks in Congress who opposed the Recovery Act and claim that it hasn't worked have been all too happy to claim credit for Recovery Act projects and the jobs those projects have produced. They come to the ribbon cuttings and... <laughs> They, they found a way to have their cake and, and vote against it, too. <laughs> but look, we're, we're making progress. But it can't come fast enough. We want to accelerate it. And we know that if we truly want to have long-term economic growth in this country, then we need to start addressing some of the struggles that middle-class families have been dealing with for years, long before this particular recession hit. This past decade has been one of the toughest our middle class has faced in generations because folks have seen their paychecks shrink, their housing prices fall, while the cost of everything from groceries to health care to college keeps going up. So a lot of you are working two jobs. Certainly everybody in your household is working. You're working longer hours, but you feel like you're treading water. And in some cases, it's not adding up. A lot of people put their kids to bed wondering whether they'll be able to give them opportunities in life that they got from their parents. And, and the thing, New Hampshire, when I was up here campaigning, I told you, I didn't run for president to kick these challenges down the road. I didn't run for president to play it safe. I didn't run to just to keep my poll numbers high as possible for the next election. I ran to solve problems for the next generation. I ran to get the hard things done. That's why you elected me. So I won't rest until businesses are hiring again, and wages are rising again, and the middle class is thriving again, and we finally got an economy that works for all Americans, not just some Americans. I won't rest until we do what we know has to be done to secure our leadership in the 21st century. I don't want to cede our future to China and India and European countries. I'm not willing to settle for second place, not for the United States of America, but But if we're going to win the race, here's the thing. I can't do this alone. Democrats can't do it alone. The president can't do it alone. We've got two parties in this country. And that's a good thing. It means we've got heated debates and vigorous disagreements. And as messy as democracy sometimes is, it means bad ideas can be discarded and good ones can be refined and we don't go too far in any one extreme. That's the genius of American democracy. So I was very pleased when the House Republican Caucus graciously invited me to attend their retreat last week. <laughs> you know, we had a good time for more than an hour. For more than an hour, we had a frank exchange about the issues facing our country. And we aired some of our grievances. We shared some ideas. There were plenty of things on which we didn't agree, but there were also some things on which we did. And even more th things that we should agree on if we could just focus on solving problems instead of scoring political points. Uh, for example, we all agree that education is the key to a 21st century economy. We all We all agree that the best anti-poverty program around is a world-class education. So, so why don't we work together to transform our schools so that every child in America can compete with their counterparts around the world, from Beijing to Bangalore? Let's work together to upgrade our community colleges, which are the gateway to a career for so many children from so many working families. And I know we've got a lot of young people who are about to head off to college in an era when a high school diploma is no longer a guarantee of a good job. 
Let's make college affordable for every qualified student. As I said at the State of the Union, no graduate should have to pay more than 10 percent of his or her income on student loans each year. We can see to it that they don't. We can see to it that they don't. We've got legislation pending right now that could make this happen. The Republicans and Democrats may not see eye to eye on the threat of global warming. I happen to think the evidence is overwhelming. Some disagree. That's. We, we, we can have a respectful uh, argument there, but, but shouldn't we agree that American homegrown energy is good for our security and that new clean energy jobs are good for our economy? Can't we all agree that these jobs shouldn't be going to China or Germany or Spain? They should be right here in the United States of America. So let's invest in innovation. Let's put people to work on solar panels and wind towers and cutting-edge batteries. Because the nation that leads the clean energy economy will be the nation that leads the global economy, and America has to be that nation. These are key parts of the foundation we need to build for a better future for our families, for our country. Another foundation stone is fixing a health insurance system that works better for insurance industry than it does for the American people. I do not quit. We are going to get that done. Nobody. We've got to get it done. We have to get it done. Nobody, nobody should be satisfied with a system that allows insurance companies to deny care to folks with pre-existing conditions that allows insurance companies to kick people off their plans when they get too sick. Nobody should accept a system where small businesses are forced to pay outrageous premiums to get their workers covered, and seniors have big gaps in their Medicare prescription coverage. Nobody should accept another decade in which health insurance premiums double and millions lose their coverage altogether. There was just a report the other day that showed even greater numbers of Americans now are having to rely on government insurance, not because of my plan, but because employer-based insurance has declined to an all-time low. Now, these are the things that I hear about every day in the letters I get, from families going bankrupt, from small businesses crushed by their health care costs. So I am not going to walk away from these efforts. I will not walk away from these people. And Congress shouldn't either. We should keep working to get it done. Democrats and Republicans together, let's get it done this year. We should all be able to agree that we've got to do something about our long-term deficits. Now, these deficits won't just burden our kids and our grandkids decades from now. They could damage our markets now. They could drive up our interest rates now. They could jeopardize our recovery right now. Responsible families don't do their budgets the way the federal government does. 